Good morning. I'm Bob Kaplan. I'm a Distinguished Professor Emeritus at the UCLA Schools of Public Health and Medicine. I'm also a former NIH Associate Director and a former Chief Science Officer at the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality. After retiring twice, I'm back at work as a faculty member at Stanford University. I want to say that I support vaccines and I've been vaccinated myself, but I do have concerns about research integrity and the process used to authorize, approve, and mandate vaccines during this emergency. Let me outline some of my concerns. First, we are often told, trust the science, because after all, scientists all agree, right? Well, do they? In practice, scientists rarely agree. In fact, advancement in science depends on colleagues challenging the prevailing wisdom. For example, leading authorities have reported that the vaccines dramatically reduce deaths from COVID-19. Yet inspection of the data from the Moderna and the Pfizer clinical trials show that death rates are identical among those randomly assigned to the vaccines or to placebos. We need to better understand how and why interpretations of the evidence differ. To be fair, scientists are divided in what constitutes evidence. Hospitalizations and deaths do appear to be higher among the unvaccinated. Yet in most systematic reviews, this observation would not be accepted as causal evidence. FDA typically requires results from clinical trials that randomly assign people to vaccine or placebo. And differences between people who accept or shun the vaccine can serve as alternate explanations for infections and deaths. On average, vaccine refusers and acceptors differ in education, political conservatism, income, and potential home and workplace exposures to the virus. And most importantly, refusers may take more risks and expose themselves to the virus, including more interpersonal interactions and uh, less mask wearing. Randomized trials remain the primary method for establishing causation. My second concern is that serious scholars have not been able to examine the raw data to, that justify the FDA and the CDC decisions. The evidence we have comes primarily from highly curated, industry-controlled press releases. And press releases do not provide the detail that we, as scientists, need to offer objective evaluations. More disturbing is that the vaccine manufacturers uh, are not honoring requests to provide raw data. Pfizer, for example, will not make data public, uh, publicly available till 2025. This is really an unacceptable delay for a product that would be used by billions of people worldwide. Over the last 80 years, FDA has evolved standards that require multiple studies and longer-term follow-up. My third concern is that the rapid development and deployment of vaccines to hundreds of millions of people required that some of the usual safeguards needed to be relaxed. Vaccines were authorized on the basis of a single trial with relatively short um, follow-up, in contrast to the typical standard of multiple trials with sufficient time to evaluate durability and harms. We need to be clear that the lower standard does not lower the bar for future FDA evaluations. In contrast to usual FDA applications, the vaccine studies have not made much of the information public. Among 72 studies on the Pfizer vaccine that are registered in clinicaltrials.gov, only one uh, is shown to have been completed and zero, that's right, zero studies have reported their results publicly. My final concern is, the legitimate, uh, is that legitimate scientific challenges have been set aside or dismissed as, quote, misinformation, unquote. I worry that young scientists may be reluctant to disclose evidence on vaccine harms. Being labeled as an anti-vaxxer could be a career ender. So what needs to be done? First, we need more transparency. We should insist on independent data analysis by investigators who are not employed by the, the vaccine manufacturers. Second, we must engage patients in the decision process. All medical treatments, like COVID vaccines, have side effects and benefits. Over the last 20 years, medicine has embraced a process of shared decision making in which providers objectively share the best evidence on the risks and benefits of treatments. Using this information, the provider-patient dyad selects the option best suited for the patient's particular circumstances. Importantly, patient preferences are honored and respected. This is not a radical idea. For most medical decisions, it's promoted by the major medical uh, provider societies. In summary, we are making big decisions on the basis of limited, highly selected evidence. 
A compromised scientific process may lead to poor decisions and it may set a bad precedent. So please remember that if it is in the public uh, interest, in this case affecting hundreds of millions of people, it should be in the public domain. Thank you for listening.